So let's fly over the Maluti Tivet College campuses, located in a little nook of the northern eastern Free State. And the line we're going to take is the Caledon River or the Mohokare River, which is the borderline between Lesotho on your right and the Free State on your left. The site of great and terrible battles over land and grazing rights in the area. And that's why you have all these border towns being created like Fixburg, which you can see in front of you. Although to be fair, more recently, Fixburg has developed quite a symbiotic relationship with Lesotho, as you can see over there. Now, at the end of the Basutu Wars, around about 1870, like 150 years ago, what happened was the Orange Free State then allocated a small little piece of land nestling on the far end of the Mohokare River, just beyond the mountains, to two Susutu clans, the Bakuna and the Batlokwa. And there you can see it kind of nestling over but bear in mind that then there was only a few people living there. The land was absolutely gorgeous and green. There's an amazing river running through it, the Irland River, with huge amount of water pouring down from this like Lesotho highland, from the top of the Maluti Mountains. And you can see all the little catchment zones with water streaming down and across with much of this water flowing down and through to the Val Dam to feed the industrialization projects of the old Transvaal and the new Gauteng. Now we're flying around, tracking the Drakensberg Mountains. So you can see that that's Free State ahead of you. You've got KwaZulu-Natal behind you and you've got Lesotho on your left. And we're taking a wide angle around the Stackfontein Dam, which is the third biggest dam in South Africa and incredibly deep. It's like almost 100 meters deep, uh, which makes it a really good reservoir of water because it doesn't evaporate, unlike the Vol Dam, which is huge and therefore causes massive evaporation. Now we're flying into the heartland of Paputa Chaba and we're going to the Itimoholeng campus. And just behind it, you can actually see the old industrial area where the apartheid government used to pay white businesses to basically come and generate some form of industry in the area at greatly subsidized prices. In fact, Janice Wallets had a factory there, the guy that killed Chris Harney. So not the most savory people doing that work. Now, Iti Moleng is an old technical college. So this is now the engineering campus where you can do mainly things like electrical engineering and civil engineering. Though it's very hard to get any practical experience there or work integrated learning. What we're doing is we're shifting slightly across now and we're going to visit the Bonamelo campus. Now this is an old teacher's college and this is where you get the central contradiction of the Maluti Tivet College setup because it combined three old teacher colleges with around about four or five technical colleges. And these teacher colleges had to be repurposed. The lecturers in there did not know anything about TVET. Often they had to go off and do programs in agriculture to try and repurpose themselves, which led to a lot of tension within the TVET college itself, a lot of people leaving and not much technical and vocational skill levels. Now we've shifted slightly across to the central campus. This used to be the main office, but it's now the business campus where they do all the business study uh, programs. And again, there's a lot of struggle over here because often the lecturers coming through don't have lots of business expertise or tourist expertise or hospitality expertise. They're often just the students who've come through the system who've now been good enough to become lecturers in the system. So you have a self-replicating system that doesn't have much experience or much contact with outside industry. And what outside industry are you going to have contact with in a situation where you've got an old homeland, Kwakwa, which had forced white industries on the side there, which have now collapsed and gone anyway. And those with high level engineering skills have left the area in search of work in other places. So even with the old technical colleges like Quetli Song, which we're going to now, they also have a situation where many of the lecturers are just the youngsters who've come through and done the basics of the actual programs themselves rather than having extensive industry experience. 
But that said, this Quillet Song uh, campus is one of the better campuses in the Maluti set. Now over here you can do a whole lot of skills programs. So you can do brick laying and boiler making and cabinet making. You can try and learn to become a motor mechanic and do panel beating and welding. And right next to Quillet Song with the red roof buildings, that's the Tibboloha Special School for Deaf and Blind Kids. And what you should notice is there's a whole bunch of educational institutions. And you know, Kwakwa, for being a homeland, really did invest in the educational structures of its people in the area. With Mo Peli, the old chief minister of Kwakwa, making it the cornerstone of his policy and the development of Kwakwa. We're actually flying over the old governmental headquarters on that hill. Those big houses you can see were actually white houses. They were ring fenced off for some of the white administrators in the area. Now taken over by the black elite in the area. So we've flown up towards Lesotho to the Lera La Chepe campus. Now this was also an old teacher's college where you can do information technology and computer science although they really are struggling with updated computers in the area. It's an old teacher's college, so like the other old teacher's colleges, these are the ones that have really struggled. And as far as I can see, those are fairly abandoned looking hostels up on the top right of the campus itself. So let's do a slow pull out now over the Maluti Mountains to get a sight of the full glory of Paputa Chaba, a place of enormous beauty nestling in the hills, which started off with a few people living there, but slowly with forced relocations from places like Bethlehem and Harry Smith, more and more people started pouring in here. And then once the Kwakwa homeland was formalized, it quickly jumped to 400, 500,000 to a million people. Now, almost all the water from here streams down to the Stackfontein Dam, which then pushes through to the Val Dam. And you can see that kind of catchment area streaming down to your left. Then to your right over there, you've got the Tugela River and the Tugela Falls streaming down through KZN. And then in between, you have the Kilburn Dam you can see over there, which is actually a relocation project, a transfer project, taking water from the Chigela River and then pumping it up to the Dreekloof Dam into the Stackfontein Dam. And by the way, that creates a hydroelectricity project where at times of need, you can then push the water all the way down from the top to the bottom and use it to generate turbines and electricity. Now we are flying over the beautiful farmlands around uh, Harry Smith. And please don't forget that these successful commercial farms over here are partly a result of all the mass uh, exodus we've seen of people being forced into Paputa Chaba and the Kwakwa homelands. And with Harry Smith again, you have a classic apartheid town where you can see the township on the one side and you can see Harry Smith on the other side with the empty piece of land in the middle. Now, the old Harry Smith campus was located in the actual town of Harry Smith in rented uh, office space. But since then, a substantial amount of money has been spent on new premises and it's actually located in the middle. And we're going to fly over the hospital and right next to it is the new Harry Smith campus, which does business studies. So you can do office administration and marketing and uh, finance, economics and accounting. I've heard that this is quite a nice campus, although curiously, some people have told me that the corridors are actually very small and the students are actually struggling to move around in the campus itself. And this has been a problem with the Maluti TVET College. A lot of money is spent and often you get a sense that not quite the value that you would have expected has uh, come from it. Now we're going to fly back to the Stackfontein Dam, actually tracking the road which goes from Harry Smith all the way through to Puta Chaba to the Sefi King Agricultural Campus. It's actually an old farm called Rosedale they've recently bought and they've turned it into this uh, agricultural village they call it and you can see the Volche River from the Stagfontein Dam running through it. Now that's a river that transfers all the water from the Chugela drainage system all the way through to the Val Dam. Now you do primary agriculture over here and I've seen glorious pictures of young men and women 
on tractors in the morning. It's cold out here, freezing, kind of with the gorgeous uh, maize fields and the mountains in the background. And the campus has got good facilities. They often use this for graduation because it's easy to park everyone out over here. And what I want you to look for as we pull out is the huge amounts of water running all the way down, either into KwaZulu Natal on the one side or through to uh, the Val Dam and Gauteng on the other side, with Paputa Chaba actually very recently almost suffering from a drought because of the lack of water and getting close to having to use tankers to transport water to the town. Now we're flying into Bethlehem, and this is a growing agricultural town. It's actually got railway workshops, it's got cold storage plants, it's got flour mills, it's got dairy, it's got beer making industry over here, it's got furniture manufacturing plants, it's got textile mills. So it's an ideal place to actually locate a TVET college which can offer all sorts of apprenticeships and skills with all sorts of industries and businesses in the area with uh, road and rail links connected all the way through to Joburg, Harry Smith and Bloemfontein. But this campus doesn't do those things. It does finance, economics and accounting on the one side. You can do office administration over here and you can also do education and development. It's kind of split in two and on the one side you've got the main office from which now the whole of uh, the Maluti Tibet College is actually run. So let's now do a radical pullback to get a sense of how all the campuses are located together. We're pulling back towards Brimfontein, kind of stretching out over the vast reaches of all the commercial farmland with its boutique towns like Clarence and Bethlehem. And then in major contrast to that, the Kwakwa area with Putachaba, where all the black people were forced to relocate and forced to rely on migrant labor to survive. And then you have this Maluti Tivet college caught in those contradictions, caught in that old history of teachers' colleges having to be converted into a Tivet college, Puputa Chava not having any industries to do work placements or work integrated learning, and a huge legacy of oppression from the Kwakwa homeland itself leaving me with a huge sense of the amount of work we still have to do to overcome the legacy of separate development and apartheid and get places like Maluti Tivet College to really be the college it could be.